You can have a billion dollars and still have a scarcity mindset and never enjoy life because of it. But when you have an abundance mindset, you change how you look at money. Happy hump day, everyone. This is the Freedom Club Podcast. I am your host, Kurt Mercadante. I hope you have had a good first half of the week, and I wish you nothing but the best in the second half of the week. In today's episode, we're going to try a little something new, but before I get there, I just want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by my very own online 30-day total freedom lifestyle transformation course. We lead you through the five pillars of the freedom lifestyle, superpowers, vision, alignment, outcomes, and flow. Go to my website, kurtmercadante.com, click on Freedom Course, join it today. Over the course of 30 days, you unlock six different modules. They're video modules with activities, actionable steps to help you live the freedom lifestyle. Hope, Hope you check it out. Go to kurtmercadante.com, click on the Freedom Course, jump in the course, and we will jumpstart your freedom lifestyle so you can begin living it today. So with that, with that little announcement out of the way, today's episode is a little different. As you know, I host the Freedom Club Community which is a private Facebook group of superheroes from around the globe, all working and growing together to live the freedom lifestyle. And so Q&H is a new segment. I live stream it in my Facebook group, and I share the audio here. And basically, I try a new wine. I give some tasting notes on that wine. If you're in the community, I give you a link to actually purchase the wine. But I also take your questions, and I take questions from people within the community. So if you want to get on this, if you want to regularly ask me questions for this segment, if you also want to join the regular live streams that I do with my podcast interviews with very special guests every week, go to Facebook now. Search for the Freedom Club community. Find the group that's called the Freedom Club community, of course, that has my ugly picture next to it. Click on that. Apply to join. Get in here. Join the fun. We have over 700 members now, and we're growing every single day. So without further ado, here's the inaugural episode of Q and Aged. I taste some good wines, and I answer your questions. Welcome to the Freedom Club Podcast, where we strive to pull you out of your life of quiet desperation, out of your comfort zone of misery, and propel you into a life of freedom and fulfillment. And now... Here's your host for this journey, international speaker and coach, and serial entrepreneur, Kurt Mercadante. So first, thank you for joining us. This is the first ever edition of Q&Aged. If you're watching live in the Freedom Club community, welcome. Uh, And I'm sure we'll get more people joining us as we can. If you're listening on my podcast, this is the first time we're trying this. Uh, Q&Aged, I go into my uh, private Facebook community, Facebook uh, club community, or sorry, the Freedom Club community, and people submit questions to me, and I answer them while enjoying a nice glass of wine. And I'm going to introduce some of that wine as we go, talk a little bit about the wine, and answer your questions. Now, before we get started, and I'll repeat this again tonight, so the wine tonight is called the Resident Zinfandel. Now, I get all my wines from Scout and Cellar. Scout and Cellar sells clean, crafted wine. So when we were in Italy, I noticed that I could drink a lot of wine and not get the headache the next day. Uh, And I wondered why that was. And bottom line is a lot of wines, mass-produced wines, wines here in the U.S., they add a lot of crap to it. They add sulfites, they add sugar, sometimes they add food coloring, pesticides, all this other stuff, and uh, that they just don't need to add in wine. And not only does it mess with the wine, it can make you feel a little crappy, right? So I started buying all my wines through Scout and Cellar. So the resident Zin is good. I'm a big fan of Zinfandel. It's from Mendocino County. I think that's how you pronounce it in California, although it should be Mendocino uh, if you're Italian like I am. It's got a little bit of raspberry in it, cherry. It's bold. I like a good bold wine. It's fruity. Uh, It is organic and it's vegan for those of you. The only reason I care about that is because it doesn't have the pesticides and sulfites and stuff that's more likely to make you feel like shit the next day uh, and have headaches. Um, So it's pretty good. Um, And uh, I like Zin because it's it's in the family of Primitivo, 
which is Italian from Puglia, the Puglia region of Italy, where my family's from. So uh, the resident Zinfandel, I get it through Scout and Cellar Wines. I'm going to put a link, actually, in the group here for you. If you're interested in checking it out. But uh, very good wine. Very good, like everyday wine. Have it with some steaks and pizza, et cetera. So with that, thank you for everyone who's joining us online. Thank you for everyone who's listening on the podcast. I'm going to take some questions. And now, if anyone joins us online and has any questions for me, please shoot them here. I'll, I'll answer them. Uh, but I want to answer some questions that I got in my Facebook group today. Daniel asks, for someone engaged in an unhealthy, unstable, toxic relationship, what would you advise as an exit strategy? I know a few people who need to hear your perspectives. So, um, you know, well, I guess you could say this to any question you would ask. It depends in certain cases, right? Um, is it a business relationship? Is it a family relationship? Is it a business relationship that's mixed with family? I unfortunately have had, had to end some toxic relationships that were within my immediate family. And it was tough to do. It happened several years ago. And it's still tough because when you do that, there's certain members of the family who think you're just being mean right? No matter how many times you take someone back, no matter how many chances you give them, there are still people in the family who will opt into codependent relationships, helping that person. Maybe there, there's drug abuse involved, alcoholism. Uh, that's in, in the case that I'm talking about. And it was very tough to do. But when a toxic relationship starts affecting your mental and physical health, you have to end it. And in terms of an exit strategy, what I did in this particular case was I actually offered to pay out of my own pocket uh, for a treatment program. And I, and, but this particular person, I didn't want around my kids anymore. I didn't want them drunk and high around my kids, making lewd comments to people, doing just some weird stuff. And so I ended it. Now that person chose to not go that route. And I gave that person the option and they basically ended it with me. And that's, that was someone within my family. You know, in a business relationship, um, if it's a toxic relationship that is impacting your wallet, and you, you just got to be upfront, Daniel. You, you just got to be upfront and let them know that. Um, I've been in such situations where I was afraid to say anything. I was afraid to have that difficult discussion. And in the end, I just had to do it. You know, I talk a lot about strengths and superpowers. And one of my top five strengths is responsibility. So I, I have that, it manifests itself as a sense of guilt for me sometimes that I feel bad. I, I find it difficult to say no out of a sense of responsibility. And that difficult discussion, I've learned, uh, you know, I had to fire clients. I had to tell clients no who were offering me a lot of money because it didn't fit my vision and my values for how I wanted to live and run my company. And so I, I actually developed an email template and I would email them. Now, I've had some people come back and say, well, you don't share news like that in email. Tough shit. You know what? In the end, um, it worked out better for anyone. And a lot of people want to have a direct discussion with you because they want the ability to either talk you out of ending the relationship or they want to yell at you. And that's really the reason they lash out in that case. But Daniel, the exit strategy has to be, if it's a truly toxic relationship, if it's, if it's a family relationship, there are options you can give that person. Um, but honesty is the best policy. You have to be upfront. Um, you have to let them know that it's having a, a, a toxic impact on your well-being, whether it's mental, physical, maybe it's both. And you just got to end it. And um, sometimes that's really tough to do. It's been very tough for me to do it. I've had to do it within my family. I've had to do it with business partners. I've had to do it with employees. Um, but in the end, you just have to do it. Uh, Pete Dunn, awesome guy. He's my sales coach. He says, you know, you got to protect your energy. And toxic relationships that suck your energy out of it and make you a worse person, they don't make you a better person. And good relationships... The, the aim of good relationships is to make you both better people. And if you're in relationships that don't do that, I've had to end relationships with people who had, you know, were supposedly my friends for decades from high school. And I had to end some of those. And um, I feel guilty about it. But in the end, it was better for me because when I was with those particular people, they were making me, they weren't 
they weren't producing the best Kurt. Uh, they brought me down a few levels. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, uh, the other question from Daniel on a personal note, oil or balm for the beard? Uh, oil sometimes protect the skin under the beard, but balm, because this thing can get crazy, especially in the dry weather. Uh, so uh, actually, dr- uh, not in the dry weather, the humid weather. The dry weather affects the skin. The humid, we- the humid weather uh, can make it crazy. Uh, and then Daniel asks, who's going to be the next Batman? Oh my gosh, who knows? I read an article today that had some horrible picks for Batman. Um, so yeah, I, I really don't know. I think the DC Universe has so many problems. As you can see, I'm wearing, for those of you listening, I'm wearing a Spider-Man uh, t-shirt. I favor Marvel. Growing up, I favored DC, but DC has so shit the bed with their their movies um, that, with the newer movies at least, I would say, you know, the Christian Bale Batmans were incredible. The Michael Keaton Batmans were incredible. So, uh, Conrad asks, in coaching people into the freedom lifestyle, what tools, tools do you use to help people get past that first initial reaction of a lifestyle of more money, more time, and into a more reasonable response of, this is what money and time do for my life? Right. So a lot of people who approach me for coaching, they value themselves and they have come to value themselves in only one facet of their life. Many times it's, I value myself as my job title. I value myself by my paycheck. I, I value myself as a, just a worker, right? An employee, a business owner. And what that happens then is, that's why you have a lot of people say they're middle-aged and they value themselves only as a paycheck generator for years and they lose their jobs and they go into deep depression because they lose their sense of self. They value themselves by their job and now they lose it and they have nothing else. By the same token, there's some say moms who have valued themselves only by as a mom for so, so, so many years and then their kids go off to college and they didn't have what I like to call alignment. And alignment is where you align the three facets of your life, family, self, and work in a way that works for you. And um, if you don't have that alignment, and you're putting all your eggs in one basket, whether it's work or family or obviously self, you know, letting your ego get in the way and only valuing yourself uh, by yourself can be a, a problem as well. When you don't have that alignment, it's harder for you to tear away. Listen, I gave up a seven figure agency because I wasn't fulfilled. I wasn't spending enough time with my family. I wasn't doing what I felt I was put on this earth to do. And so, yeah, there are a lot of people who think they need more money and more time. We all, let me address the time piece. And I, I, I talked about this in a recent podcast, but everyone here listening to this, everyone in my Facebook group, everyone in my podcast listeners, we each have the same amount of hours in the day that Mother Teresa had, that Winston Churchill had, that Abraham Lincoln had. We all have the same hours in the day. There are some people who convince themselves that they're too busy. And some of them wear that as a badge of honor and they like seeming too busy because it makes them feel important. But really, when you say you're too busy, busy is a choice. The way you spend the time in your day is a choice. And I urge people, if you're someone who says, uh, you know, you, 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 you apologize to your son or daughter, sorry, Johnny, uh, I couldn't make your piano recital because I had to work that day. I want you to stop saying that. And I want you to say to yourself, and I want you to force yourself to say to Johnny, sorry, I didn't make your piano recital. I chose to work late. Now you may say I had to work later. I'm going to get fired. It's still a choice. Whether you want to believe that or not, working in a job that makes you choose the job over your family, that's a choice. And you may say easier said than done. I've made that choice. Uh, I've made it on several occasions. I left the corporate job, moved my wife, my pregnant wife across the country to start my own business because I, I was not fulfilled. I ended and basically gutted my revenue because I wasn't fulfilled. And like Conrad says, this is what money and time do for my life. I mean, I look at money differently. We uh, were engaged at the fake canal, Grand Canal, at the Venetian Resort on a gondola in. Uh, in Las Vegas. And we vowed very next year, 
we're going to go to the Rio Grande Canal. It took us 17 years to do that. I had a seven-figure agency. I certainly had enough money to take a vacation to Europe, but we kept saying, we need that next 2,000. We need that next 5,000. We need that that next 10,000. And so that money got in the way of doing everything. You know, you talk about time. I cut our honeymoon in half to impress a boss of a new job that I had. And looking back, that's time I can't have back because time is a non-renewable resource. So if you keep wanting more money and more time, you're never going to have enough of it, right? Because you don't know if you're going to live another 20 minutes. Let's face it, 20 minutes or 40 years. That time is non-renewable. So if you keep putting your head down, hoping that life will balance out at some point in the future, when you have enough money saved away to then take some time off, that mentality will never let you have enough money to take that time off. And so you have to, you know, when you have a scarcity mindset, you never have enough money. You can have a billion dollars and still have a scarcity mindset and never enjoy life because of it. But when you have an abundance mindset, you change how you look at money. You look at money not as an end-all be-all, but as a tool to purchase things that give you fulfillment. Purchasing that plane ticket to go travel with your family. Um, whatever it is, whatever fulfills you, when you start looking at money in that way, it changes your life. You start valuing time more than money and you start valuing money for, I guess, the time it can buy you in some cases. I don't work Mondays and Fridays. Now, I make much less revenue than I did with my agency and I'm much more fulfilled. I feel richer now than when I had a seven-figure agency running. Now, I'm probably going to be at seven figures by the end of this year again with my coaching company, um, but I'm going to look at it much differently than I did. We're already planning. Um, we took a, a Europe trip, five and a half week Europe trip in August. We're planning another one for this May. And, you know, I, I said this yesterday in my LinkedIn local speech. The great majority of people who call me from coaching are middle-aged white men. They aren't people who grew up with much of a struggle they're not people who are struggling financially now. Some of them are making 300 grand, 400 grand, and they're still unhappy. They're still depressed. Some of them are depressed. They're still unfulfilled. All that money isn't filling the gap in their life that is there. And they feel like they don't have enough time to do anything. They're making a lot of money, but to them it doesn't feel like it because they're not enjoying life. And the one thing holding them back, they tell me, is they got to make more money. And so there's a disconnect there. And I often ask people if they're married, I, you know, they tell me the relationships are suffering, their health is suffering. And I said, okay, well, what's, what's it going to take for you to make a change? And they said, well, I, I'd make a change today, but I got to make the same salary I'm making. Let's say it's 300 grand. And they said, okay, so $300,000 is the price tag you put on your wife. They said, that's preposterous. I said, why? You're already making 300 grand. Your relationship sucks. Your health sucks. You might lose your wife. So 300 grand is absolutely positively the, the price you put on that. Now, some people say, well, you're just a dick, Kurt. That's just too tough. That's my style. If you haven't learned that by now, I'm sorry. Um, but that's the price you're absolutely putting on your health and, and your relationships. So yeah, Conrad, in terms of the process and the tools I use to get people out of that, um, first, we do things like every single day, the last thing you do before you go to bed is you write down three things you achieved that day and three things you're grateful for. And that's the first thing you read when you get up in the day, right? And that goes along with the freedom five that I coach people on. The number one piece is superpowers. So you work in your strength zone every day. You amplify those strengths, your superpowers every day. Most of us try to focus on fixing our weaknesses every day, and that's absolutely the wrong way to go about it in terms of productivity, efficiency, quality of life. The second is having a clear vision for your life, that desired outcome you want for your life. And if you don't have that, and you just go from random objective to random objective, then yeah, you're, you're not going to have a clear destination where you want to go. Then it's alignment, aligning those three facets of life, family, self, and work. Then it's Outcomes, building an outcomes-focused life where every day you've reverse engineered that vision so that every year you have 
objectives for work, family, and self that lead up to your life vision, but you keep reverse engineering it so that every month, every week, every day, you just have three outcomes you know to win the day. And by winning the day, I mean you're moving yourself without all the bullshit, stripping it away so that if I ask you, what did you achieve today? You don't answer, oh, I got 20 things on my to-do list done. That's not what you achieved today. That's random inputs you achieved that didn't necessarily get you any closer to your outcomes. And so living an outcomes-focused life means reverse engineering that vision to today so that you do three things that day, three things to win the day that move you toward your outcome. It gives great clarity to you. You don't feel like you're, quote, busy all the time, right? Because remember, busy is a choice. Um, you don't feel always feel like, I don't have enough money because money has become that end-all, be-all. It's replaced uh, what is actually a clear, compelling vision for you. You don't feel like you have enough time when you don't have a clear vision, when you're not in full, in full alignment, when you don't lead an outcomes-focused life. And, and the last uh, Freedom Five, the, the, the fifth pillar of li living the freedom lifestyle is flow. And when you do all those things I mentioned, when you focus on amplifying your superpowers every day and you work in that superpower zone, when you have a clear and compelling, clearly defined life vision, when your family, yourself, and your work are in alignment, when you live an outcomes-focused life, all of that leads up to flow. Living every day like flowing water instead of like you've clogged the drain, that's when your days are a grind, right? So I hope that answers your question, Conrad. So thanks, Daniel and Conrad, for your questions. Again, this is the first episode of Q&Aged. For those listening on my podcast, I'm doing this as a live stream in the Freedom Club community, my private Facebook group. If you are not a member, what the hell is wrong with you? Go to Facebook now, search for the Freedom Club community. You'll see my ugly mug, a picture of me next to it. That's the one. Click to apply. Get in here. You can join live streams like this. If you're watching live, hello, and you can see the glass of, that's q and aged. So uh, during q and age, you ask me questions. And I try a new glass of wine. Again, today, I'm drinking the resident Zinfandel from Mendocino County, California. It's fruity and bold. I put a link in the Facebook group so you can purchase it if you so choose. Again, it's organic. It doesn't have all the added sulfites, the added sugars, all the added crap. Uh, I like to call it. Legally, you're not supposed to say this. Scout and Seller says it. But, but the reason I'm drinking it is because I don't get the headaches and I don't feel like crap the next day when I drink it. So. so Fabio, you are on. David, Michelle, thanks for joining us live. Sam, Terry, Sully, Jeff, I appreciate it. If anyone has any questions, I'm going to sip some wine and wait for you to shoot them here and I'll answer them as they come in. Again, if you're listening on the podcast, I'm doing this at 8.30 on a Friday, so I didn't expect a lot of people to join, but I decided today that I was going to do it tonight. And I hope you are tasting a nice wine, a nice good wine tonight as well. well I want to thank everyone, by the way, for being a member of the Freedom Club community. Um, we do live streams like this. We, we uh, All my podcast interviews are in the community as well. And I want to thank all of my podcast listeners. We've been growing month after month. We have a global audience. It's really humbling. I'm grateful for all of you who listen. I'd also like to add that I mentioned the Freedom Five in this episode. You know, those are the five pillars of the freedom lifestyle. And in my new online 30-day Total Freedom Lifestyle Transformation course, we lead you through those five pillars of the freedom lifestyle with video modules, activities to help you adapt that Freedom Five to your life. So I hope you'll check it out. If you go to my website, newly launched, relaunched website, KurtMercadante.com. You'll find the Freedom Course there. Click on that and join. Would love to have you jump in that. So I don't have any other questions at that at that point at this point. So with that, I am going to sign off. For those of you listening on the podcast, thank you so much. We'll be back here Friday. And for those of you in the community, if you didn't catch the live stream, keep the questions coming because I'm in and out of the Facebook group all the time. I'll answer your questions. No matter where you're listening, where you're watching, thank you so much. This has been Q&Aged with the Freedom Club and the Freedom Club community. Thank you. <laughs>